Body language and television news presentations. What can the study of head and eyebrow movements of television news presenters tell us about the nature of spoken communication? My name is Gilbert Ambrositis and I'm a speech and language scientist. I think it's important to watch the news. Or should I rather say to watch the news? Because what I'll try to convince you of in this lecture is that it can make a difference if you're able to see a news anchor presenting the news compared to if you only listen. In my research, I focus on how we highlight words in spoken communication by means of our voice in combination with bodily movements, so-called co-speech gestures. Have you ever thought about the movements of news presenters? They don't make a lot of hand gestures, at least not on Swedish television, but they move their heads and their eyebrows quite a lot indeed. Now, let's have a look. Så kallad eftersupning, alltså då misstänkta rattfyllerister hävdar att de druckit alkohol först efter bilfärden, bör inte kriminaliseras. Det anser regeringens utredare. Although it might seem clear intuitively that we use gestures of various kinds when speaking, there is a lot we still don't know about how and why they really come into play. Obviously, you can use gestures or facial expressions for rhetoric purposes. But most of the time we use gestures without really being aware of them. So, for instance, news presenters on Swedish television overall seem to try to move as little as possible, but they still move their heads and their eyebrows quite a lot, without having planned or rehearsed these movements. What my field of study is interested in is why we produce all these non-audible movements and how exactly they are coordinated with the audible speech stream. And why is this important? Well, first, this is basic research. If we want to understand how human speech communication works, if we want to understand the nature of spoken language, we need to ask questions like these. In addition, the outcome of research on co-speech gestures can be applied in various ways. For instance, in pronunciation training or in the development of humanoid robots. Now, why am I looking at television news presentations to study how gestures relate to speech? On the one hand, news presentations are a very special genre since they represent red speech and they contain hardly any gestures. On the other hand, this is beneficial for our study. These data offer a nice opportunity to strictly focus on head and eyebrow movements. So let me now briefly show you some of our findings. We have studied the selection of television news presentations from two perspectives, asking, first, when and why do head and eyebrow movements occur? So this is about speech production. And second, how do head movements affect what we hear? So this is about speech perception. And to answer the first question, we used about 140 short news stories from Swedish public service television and labeled all head and eyebrow movements in this material. This means that we watched the clips very carefully at reduced speed in a specialized annotation software, where we marked if a word was produced with a head or an eyebrow movement, or both. We also marked if a word was pronounced with a so-called pitch accent. A pitch accent is a sort of inflection in the melody of speech, which is commonly used to make a word sound stressed or salient. So what did our analysis show? First, when and why do head and eyebrow movements occur? We found that about every fifth to every fourth word was spoken with a head movement. And importantly, these movements do not seem to be random. They normally occur together with the so-called pitch accents. These head movements probably fulfill many different functions, but let's here focus on one of them. The fact that they regularly occur together with pitch accents probably means that they indeed help highlighting words, as this is what pitch accents do. It doesn't necessarily mean that head movements imply strong emphasis, but at least they seem to contribute to a kind of basic rhythmical structure of the utterance. It is also interesting to note that although we observed many cases where a word was stressed by means of a pitch accent only, in most cases, this highlighting was achieved multimodally, meaning that both a pitch accent and a head movement were involved, and sometimes even an eyebrow movement. And to characterize these findings with some numbers, we observed a pitch accent in about 30% of all words, whereby more than half of them were accompanied by a head movement. As mentioned earlier, head movements occurred in between 20 to 25% of the words, most of the time together with a pitch accent. Notably, we only found rather few eyebrow movements, about one per sentence. 
but if they occurred, they were usually combined with a pitch accent and a head movement. In other words, they come on top of everything, which suggests to me that they are typically used when a word really needs to be highlighted a lot, at least in news presentations. And indeed, we saw in our study that eyebrow movements typically go together with words that are special in some sense concerning the meaning. For example, words that refer to great numbers or values, as in jewels worth about 300 million kroner, or to emotions such as luckily, or to contrast, as in the word despite. In the following clip, you can see an example of this. The speaker moves his eyebrows very clearly only a single time in this clip, and this movement is aligned with the word trotz, meaning despite. So try to focus on the eyebrows now and see if you can hear the word trotz at the point in time when the eyebrows are raised. Kvällens uppdrag granskning handlar om hur svensk östersjölax exporteras till EU. Trots att det finns ett förbud mot det eftersom den feta östersjölaxen innehåller för mycket miljögifter. Well, now I've presented an overview of results answering our first question. When and why do head and eyebrow movements occur? Let's now turn to our second question. How do head movements affect what we hear? In order to answer this question, we let two groups of participants watch or listen to a selection of our news clips and ask them how strong or highlighted they perceived each word in the clip. As you can see here, each word was represented by a box and what we asked the participants to do was to rate each word by means of clicking on these boxes. Importantly, one group of participants was able to see the video display, as in this example, while for the other group, only the words and the audio controls were shown, so they could only listen to the clips. We then analyzed the data in order to find out whether it made a difference if you, could, if you had access to the video or not. Well, overall, our results displayed only small effects, but they suggest that words with head movements were perceived slightly stronger by the group of participants who could see the speaker, compared to the participants who were only allowed to listen. Interestingly, words that were not spoken with head movements tended to be rated slightly weaker by those who could see the speaker. In other words, you perceive a greater difference between words with and without head movements if you can see the speaker compared to when not, which is indicated by the errors in the plot. This could mean that we perceive speech as more dynamic when we can see the speaker and her or his head movements. This also means that not being able to see the news presenter might potentially, under certain conditions, alter the meaning of the message because the relation between the stress levels of words is indeed often essential for the interpretation of an utterance. Compare, for instance, my two pronunciations of the following sentence. The Prime Minister ignored the President and then she insulted her. Or, the Prime Minister ignored the President and then she insulted her. Thanks to this study, we now know at least a little more about the role of head and eyebrow movements in spoken communication, and in particular in television news presentations. Thank you for watching.